Hello everyone! In this video we are going to take a look at how we can wrap a signature pet library and store the output, which is a base64 string, as an image on the server. We will be using this signature pet library, which you can download from GitHub, and this is what it does. Let's take a look at the plan for this video. I've already created the LiveWire component in Vue with which we will be working. As you can see here on the right, we have a canvas and a button, but at the moment they do nothing. So that's what we will have to build. We will complete the following steps to get it wrapped with Alpine and LiveWire. We'll get it working with Vanilla.js. We'll then wrap it with Alpine. We will sync the output of the signature pad to our LiveWire component. We will store it on the server and to take it to the next level, we will wrap the signature pad inside the blade component. Let's start by getting it working in Vanilla.js. So we'll go to our view and we'll have to get it working on this canvas. So we'll give this canvas an ID, signature canvas, and let's grab it with JavaScript. Canvas is document get by ID. Signature canvas, that's the one. And then let's initialize our signature pad. Signature pad. And now we'll call the constructor constructor of the signature pad. And pass it the canvas. That should do it. Let's refresh the page. And sure enough. We now have a working signature pad in Vanilla.js. So that's done. Next step is wrapping it with Alpine.js. To do so, let's start by placing the basic template for an Alpine component into our script tag. And let's call our component signature pad. We'll initialize it on this div xdata is signature pad and we'll move the initialization of the signature pad into our init function and let's store it in a variable let's call it signature pad instance which we'll need later to fetch the base64 string from the signature pad let's initialize this null Let's then store our instance into that variable. That's fine, and we'll need to do something about this because we won't be fetching it by ID anymore. So we'll change this ID into an X ref. And we'll also use that ref here. Signature. Canvas. Is that correct? Looks fine. And then we'll refresh the page. So we're now done finishing wrapping it with Alpine.js. And we'll now try and fetch the base64 string and syncing that to a property on our live our components. We'll do that when we click on this button. Let's give it click listener and let's call an upload method which we will create on our Alpine component and when we click that button we'll want to set the base64 string on our live for our components so let's call this set and we'll create that variable on our live for our components in just a minute First, we'll grab the base64 string from the signature pad instance by calling its to data URL method and we'll want an image out of it. That should do it. And let's create that variable. And then I mean this one. So we'll give it a public property called signature to which we can sync 
our base64. Let's see if that works. Let's throw something, let's submit, and now we'll check here if it got sent to our LiveWire components, LiveWire, and as you can see, the signature property here now has a base64 string attached to it. So that's great. So that's done. And we'll now try to store the base64 string as an image. So after we've done syncing it to our signature property, we'll call a method. Let's call it submit. And then we'll use that method to actually store the image with our live our components. So let's create that function here, submit. And let's actually have a look at what that signature looked like again. As you can see, this is a string. And actually the only part we need is after the comma. That's the actual content that we'll need to store to a file. So to do so, we'll need to explode after this comma and store this part. Let's remove the die and dump and let's explode it. We'll use the string helper and then we'll grab the parts after the comma. That's better. There we go. After comma. And we'll need to base 64 decode that. And that's what we'll want to store in a file. So let's grab that. And let's put that in storage. Storage puts. Let's put it in a signatures folder. And let's call it signature.png. There we go. Let's see if it works. Let's try saving it. And now we'll have a look in our storage to see if it actually got stored. Signatures, and let's open it. Yeah, looks the same to me. So now we're also done storing the base 64 image with LiveWire. We have now successfully integrated the signature path into our LiveWare components. However, it's tightly coupled to our LiveWare components and it is not reusable. There are two things we have to fix. Firstly, the code responsible for the signature path should not live inside our LiveWare component. And secondly, the Alpine component should not contain a hard-coded reference to a LiveWare property. To fix these problems, we are going to extract the Alpine component that wraps the signature path into a separate blade component, so we can use it anywhere in our application. This will give us a separation of concerns where the LiveWare component is in charge of handling the form and the blade component contains the signature path logic. Let's create our blade component. Make component signature path and we'll delete PHP file because we'll only need a few. Let's extract the signature path from the LiveWire components. So I'll move this down a little bit so we can grab this entire div and move it into our blade component and then we'll grab the script tags and move them over as well. And we can now use the blade component here. Signature path, that's right. And we'll want to use it as any other input by just putting a wire model on it, which will attach to the signature property. To get our blade component to be able to work with this wire model, we'll have to refactor it a little bit. 
because at the moment we still have this hard-coded signature variable in it. What we'll do is we'll entangle the wire model. So that will be passed into our Alpine components where we'll store it. And the next thing we we'll want to do is add an event listener to the signature path instance so that we can update this value every time the canvas is updated. And because we've entangled that value, the live wire component should also be updated. Let's see if it's working so far. Yeah, that looks fine. We're going to add an event listener that listens to the end stroke event on the signature path. So add event listener. We'll listen for end stroke. And when that fires, we'll want to update our value. And we grab that code from over here. And we actually don't need this develop method anymore because the button doesn't live inside this component and the syncing should happen by updating the value. Let's see if that works. And we don't have to press submit, but we'll just see if it got synced to our live component and it did. And we'll draw some more and see if it gets synced again. And yes, you can see another network request was fired and the signature was updated. So the only thing we have to do now is change this button into a wire click instead of an Xon click and let's call a submit method. And let's see if that works. So there are something different, we'll submit it, and we'll see if our signature .png got updated, or is it? Yeah, that's good. And there's one more thing we can add, because if you actually look at the network requests, and you can see it's firing a request every time that you draw something that may actually be a little bit overkill. So what we can do is add defer to our warm model. Let's refresh the page. And now it doesn't send any network requests until we actually press the submit button. And then it got synced. And there we have our signature. So we did that as well. That was all folks. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.